for the birds. He asked me how I was today. And I didn't have the words to say I'm not okay. I'm struggling. That sometimes, when the ends won't meet, that I can't see tomorrow. And there are days when only the grace of swans bring comfort. When I pray to the herons for the peace of their stillness. And watch as cormorants disappear beneath the water's surface, wondering how quick it could take me from this. But I swallow back the sorrow, looking anywhere but his eyes, and said, Ara grand, yeah. Sure, how would you be? I'm sitting up and eating a bit, thinking flippancy might be enough to bring us back to the ease of talking football and politics. But he knows all this. He sees through it. Because he too sometimes struggles for the words, and he too seeks his solace in the birds. I have heard him, talking to robins like old friends, listen to his excitement when a goshawk landed there and then as he watched the sparrows, the tits, the wrens, the finches and the turtle doves. I've seen the kindness and the care and love with which he feeds them, as though he needs them. And on the darkest mornings, when even the sun pulls the covers tighter, lamenting the summer's loss, I've seen his footprints in the frost, the feeders fill to the brim, and him, coffee in hand, standing and watching with the door ajar, as though to say, I am that you are. Because his winter is for the birds. His spring is for the flowers, his summer is for the ocean and the sun between the showers and the harvest of his autumn is as much within as without. But as we stood there, as two grown men looking out over the garden of his Eden, every plume and wing became an angel and every song they sing became the psalm of a sacred offering to the great I Am. And in that moment, as the swallows rushed to weigh down the wire for their own journey south, and a blackbird called to a thrush picking berries from a briar, he reached out his knowing arms and drew me in. And I knew him then, less as a father than as a friend. <laughs>